In this exercise, we are going to interface the RTC chip to our STM32 microcontroller. We are also going to interface an LCD, a character LCD. Basically, the project is real-time clock displaying on the LCD. So we'll be interfacing DS1307 RTC chip and 16 cross 2 character LCD to STM32 discovery board. We are going to read current time and date information from the DS1307 chip and we have to display it on the LCD. This is how our circuit overview looks like. So we have got STM32 discovery board and you have to interface DS1307 tiny RTS module. It's a very low cost RTC module which is based on DS1307 RTC chip pretty much famous in Arduino community. We use this in Arduino projects and uh, you can get it in any online electronic shops. Very low cost component. We'll be interfacing the tiny RTS module to our board over I2C pins. And after that for display purpose I'm going to use 16 cross 2 character LCD and uh, we will be driving the LCD by using GPIOs. Both are very low cost components so you can get it easily. This is how the circuit connection looks like. So you need some jumper wires for the connections and uh, a breadboard is required. This RTC module is connected over two pins that is I2C pins. So we'll be using same I2C pins at the master side. The board acts as master here and this RTC module acts as slave. So same pins I'm going to use. On the RTC module you can see that there are pins for I2C communication that is SCL, SDA and also there is a VCC and ground. VCC and ground you should connect it to common VCC and common ground points on the breadboard. And from the master side you can get 5 volt supply here and the ground supply you should provide it on the breadboard. And uh, I will discuss this uh, LCD connection little later. First we will test the communication between uh, STM32 discovery board and the RTC module. So first we will do that connection and we will test it. We will test the readings using print apps. Later I will explain about the LCD connections. LCD connections is very simple actually. So you just have to use some GPIO pins of your board. I have used PD0 to PD6 but I will explain this later. So no logic level connectors are required here between STM32 discovery board and the RTC module because if you check the data sheet of this uh, module so the voltage levels will be compatible. Let me show you the data sheet. By the way I have attached the data sheet with this lecture so you can download it. In the data sheet you can go to this recommended uh, DC operating conditions. By the way so you can go to this uh, AMR table here. Please note that you cannot apply more than 7 volt to that module. Our voltage is around 5 volt. So we will not be exceeding this voltage limit. This is a data sheet of the chip. This is not the data sheet of the or reference manual of the module. This is a data sheet of the chip. So you can see that here you typically should provide the VCC of 5 volt or at least you should supply 4.5 volt. And after that you can see here the VIH minimum voltage is 2.2 volt for this chip which is actually compatible with our microcontroller's VOH minimum. Let me take you back to the discussion of logic levels. On the STM32 discovery board, the VDD is equal to 3 volt actually. So if you consider that and if you recalculate these uh, parameters, here you can see that the VOH minimum is 2.6 volt. And its VIH minimum is 2.2 volt. This value is higher than the required logic level 
voltage. That's why it is compatible. You need not to use any logic level converter. And for VIL, maximum is around uh, 0.8 volt. So our board's VOL maximum would be 0.4 volt. That means it is compatible. And if you consider our board as receiver, then you can see that the VOL, there is no VOH. Why? Because it works over uh, open drain communication. The pins are open drain in nature. That's why there is no VOH. There will be only VOL. So that's why the maximum VOL is 0 0.4 volt. In our discovery board, when acts as receiver, the VIL maximum is 0 0.9 volt. So that's why it is well within the limit. That's why there is a logic level compatibility between this chip and the STM32 discovery board. Hence, you don't require any logic level converters. And after that, if you just go through its uh, I2C communication parameters, the SCL clock frequency should be less than 100 kilohertz. That means you cannot drive this RTC chip in fast mode. You should use standard mode where the SCL clock frequency speed is limited to 100 kilohertz. And after that, other important parameters would be, so I'm not going to discuss all these things. This is as per the specification, the maximum rise time is 1000 nanoseconds for standard mode. So you can consider these parameters to calculate the full up resistor values. The capacitance load for each bus line is maximum. You know that from the specification, it is around 400 picofarad. You can consider these values while calculating the full up resistor values. When you are handling any I2C chip, please investigate these tables to extract information so that you can calculate the resistor values properly and uh, you will come to know exactly with what frequency you have to uh, drive that chip and also you will get various other information related to voltage level compatibility. And after that while coding I will be uh, going through these tables and various register details in order to extract date and time information. So these are different registers from which you can read the values over I2C transaction. So we'll explore more on that later when we start coding. Now to implement this project, so we will take this uh, layered approach. We'll be writing lcd.c which takes care of LCD and we'll be writing uh, ds1307.c which will be taking care the RTC chip. So we call this layer as BSP layer a board support package layer or simply BSP. So why I call this as a BSP? Let's consider LCD and DS1307 is part of our board and um, we are giving some software or code for the user to handle those devices which are there in our board. That's why the LCD.C and DS1307.C is a part of BSP because the BSP layer abstracts the usage of RTC and LCD. The BSP layer has to expose these simple functions or APIs to the user level application to use the LCD or RTC chip. So you can see that the BSP layer exposes some simple uh, intuitive functions like get current time, get date, LCD write, LCD init, such functions to the user level. And the user level application need not to bother anything about handling LCD peripheral or RTC peripheral. It doesn't need to know about the internal register details of the various devices which are part of the board. So all those register handling or all those device handling things are done in the BSP layer. So the user who is using the board, he just expects some simple APIs to or some simple functions to talk with 
the different devices of the board like LCD or RTC. He just wants to write some data to the LCDs. That's why he just expects there should be a function called LCD write. That's it. The user just wants to read date and time information from the RTC. So the user just expects there should be a function which is exposed by the BSP layer to get the current time and date information. All the other things are done inside this uh, lcd.c and ds1307.c. Those files know how to handle the LCD and uh, RTC chip. So that's why you can say that the BSP layer abstracts the usage of the onboard devices. After that, we have got the HAL layer, that is hardware abstraction layer or low level drivers layer. The peripheral drivers of the microcontroller are part of this layer. So far, whatever we have implemented is part of this layer. This layer code knows how to handle the peripherals of the microcontroller. So this code is actually specific to a particular microcontroller. So that's why for this exercise, we'll create one folder called BSP and that will create all these files. and. Uh, in that files, we are going to include codes uh, which handle those devices. So I'll be creating lcd.c, lcd.h, and ds1307.c and ds1307.h. Now let's get into the IDE and let's start doing this exercise. Now in the IDE, let's create one new file in the source directory. In the source, let's create new source file. This is our application. I would call it as 017 RTC underscore LCD dot C. And after that, let's create one new folder. Just click on source folder and give the name BSP. Finish. And in the BSP, let's create more source files. Let me call it as LCD dot C. Another one, let me call it as ds1307.c. And after that, let's create two header files lcd.h and ds1307.h. Fine. And after that, just right click on this PSP, go to properties. Go to build and uh, make sure that this is unchecked. For me, it is unchecked already. No problem. So I'll just apply and apply and close. For a time being, let's exclude this lcd.c. I'll just right click here and I will exclude that file. And also lcd.h. It's not required for a time being. All right. So now let's first implement the header file for DS1307RTC chip. This header file basically contains a device related information such as the I2C address, the slave address, the register addresses from which the date and time information can be extracted, the data structure to handle the information, some function prototypes which are exposed to applications. These functions can be used by the user level application to use the device. And also some application configurable items such as I2C peripheral number, uh, pin numbers, etc. First, what you have to do is you have to go through the data sheet of the device and you extract the information. And after that, you include all that information in the form of data structure or in the form of uh, macros into this header file. Now let's do that. Now first of all, let's explore this device a bit. So here the data sheet says this DS1307 serial time clock is a low power. It's a fully binary coded decimal clock and calendar. It's basically a clock calendar chip. And it has got some non volatile RAM address and data information are 
transferred serially through an I2C bidirectional bus. The clock calendar provides seconds, minutes, hours, day, date, month, and year information. All these information we are going to read from this device. So the end of the month date is automatically adjusted for months uh, fewer than 31 days. So including corrections for the leap years. Corrections for the leap year and if there is any month which has got less than 31 days. So all those adjustment is done by the chip itself at the hardware level. The software need not to worry anything about those things. The software can just initiate some I2C transactions and it can extract the readings from this chip. This chip also provides a different time format like 24 hour and 12 hour format with AM PM indicators. And uh, this chip also has a built in power sensor kit that detects power failures and automatically switches to the backup supply. Basically, we don't use backup supply in this project, but the module has the backup provision. You can install a small battery into that tiny RTC module. When the main power goes down, there is a power sensor kit in the chip itself which detects the power failure and automatically switches to the battery power. This is how you should connect uh, this chip to the microcontroller. So you need some pull up resistors here because it is I2C communication. You can use uh, the resistors of 3.3 uh, kilo ohms, no problem. And X1 and X2, you should connect a crystal for timekeeping. So the time and date information are calibrated or the time is ticked because of this crystal. For this chip, the crystal must be connected at these locations, at these pins X1 and X2. X1 and X2 is pin number 1 and 2. If you check the module, the tiny RTC module, you can see that this is a chip TS1307 and this is pin number 1 and 2 and this is a crystal X1. So the module already has a crystal. You need not to worry about installing any external crystals. Now let's explore further. Let's explore some more thing here. I'm going to skip for this for a time being. If you are interested, you can take a look into these tables, which explains uh, various pins. So I'm directly getting into oscillator circuit. Here, the DS1307 uses an external 32. 768 kilohertz of crystal. This crystal is very important because for timekeeping. The oscillator circuit does not require any external resistors or capacitors. As I already said, in our tiny RTC module, this is already installed. And uh, after that, the clock and calendar information you can get by reading these addresses of the chip. So we'll explore about these registers in the next lecture.